Welcome back to the presentation number two, part two. In the first recording, part one, I told you about, about some reference stories in IBM that was neck and neck, and they were working with segmentation. And I will show you that in this presentation also what that is. And we also had the Amsterdam and advanced outer parts that was using a method for cross-selling. And I would do, do a demo for that. So first, step one in predictive analytics is to look a little bit back in your data, to look historical in your customer database. How much money does my customer spend? And many organizations is already doing this, but they stop there. Shouldn't it be interesting to go one step further to find out why some customer spends more than others? Or why is some customer answering a marketing campaign? One example that UNICEF is doing in Netherlands is to find out good segments. And they always take a random sample and do a test marketing campaign on this group. And then they use this on the rest of the customer, this information. In the next step, we want to learn something about the customer. Why is some people answering the marketing campaign, for example? Or why is some people buying more than others? Here's an example of a group that the computer found out, and that's people living in bigger cities using product A and B, and is, they are 25 to 28 years old. But the computer has also found out another group, and that's people living in smaller cities using only product A, and is a little bit older. And then the computer finds out that female that has been customer more than five years is also a group that's spending more. And then we have a more complex information about a group that is male living in smaller city, product A and D, and has been customer two and three years and is 40 to 49 years old. So why not using this information on other new prospect databases, for example, or like UNICEF is doing. They have found out this information on a test sample, and then they use this information on the rest of the customer base. That's predictive analytics. And we'll go further to this picture. Pretend that this is the new customers. Then wouldn't it be very smart to just go out with marketing to this group that is, has, has a high chance to answer a campaign, like people living in bigger city, product A and B, 25 years to 28 years old, or this group, or the female, or the more complex group. So that's the last step, and that is why we, where we can find more profit and we can save costs. And we have now come to the demo. And before I start the software, I will tell you about the software and results from it in some pictures. So here is one picture that shows you the software. It's a very visual software. There is an analytical method called data mining that is used. Data mining is like the name say, finding patterns from the data. Like in my last example where I found out which segments that was interest, interested to buy from a marketing campaign or to spend a lot of money. Often there are much data and it's impossible for the human brain to find out these interesting segments or patterns. So a computer is needed for this. And data mining is a process that includes steps before you start, you must know your business goals and why you would like to do this. The first steps are then bringing in all data from customer, often from different data sources. You might have a CRM system with buying behaviors, and then you had maybe a register with demographic information, and then a third system with addresses, and then a fourth system with contacts to the service department in your organization. The important thing is to have a software that manage to merge all this information together in a safe and easy way, 
Otherwise, you cannot do anything more. Then the process continue with next step that is necessary to clean the data from error or just fix and recode data. And then the next step in the data mining process is the most interesting one, and that is to let the data mining method find out the pattern that you are interested of in your business goals. So if your target is to find out the profitable segments to sell more to, then you can let the computer find out the best segments or profiles of your customers. Next step is to evaluate the model, and if it's a good one, use it for the future. And here you get some value of the data mining. You can save costs as you just send out the marketing to some prospects, and you increase the revenue as the chance is high in these segments that they will be positive to your offer. So repeat the process that looks like a stream, and before you starting, know your business goals. Then bring in data, then clean the data, then mine or analyze your data and find out the best segments. And last, evaluate and predict the future with the information. So how does the analyze look like? If I go into that step that is analyzing my data, here is the results of a tree analysis where the goal is to find out segments that are willing to buy products from an offer in a campaign. And the analysis name is tree analysis. And the target variable you can see in the top, that is if they are, have answered that they are interested or not. And we can see three branches. And the most profitable seg uh, segment you can see is the first one, the occupation. And we can see that the occupation working at home has a higher value. It's 20% that is interested to buy in this group. So that's an interesting group. If we go further in the tree, we can see another branch. And here we can see that that four color marketing campaigns are more profitable. That is almost 30% answering yes to the campaign. And if the age is between 35 and 55 years old, then it's 42% that is answering yes to buy this product. And every tree branch is a segment. And in this example, we have the segment that is working from home, getting four colors, marketing offer, and is between 35 and 55 years old. And people working with the IT programming, they would call this for rules in their world. All these rules can be reused of computer programs, and that is what we do in predictive analytics as a last step to use this for the future. And here is a list with all new customers, and they have all got the score from these rules and you see the scores in the right part of the list. And that's the score that tells about the probability to buy a product from you. So to save cost, we just send out an offer to the high scored customers, not the other one. So you have seen the tree analysis, and that's one way to find out the best explanation of complex information that can explain why a customer buy a lot or why a customer answering a campaign. And this is a method that fits in very well to the neck and neck example that I was talking about in the last recording, part one, where they wanted to find out interesting segments. And now I'm going to show you a method that is good for cross-selling, and that's called basket analysis. So, for example, if they buy product A, what is the chance that they also buy product D? So now I'm going to do a demo in the program, the data mining program that is called IBM as Business Modeler. So here you see the window, and uh, we will go to the, the empty one. You just drag and drop the tools that you have here. 
So in the beginning, you need a file that you want to open, information about your customer, for example. You also have to define which file you would like to open, like this one. And this is what people is buying. You can have a preview and see how it looks like. You see the first 10 customers. Then you go further and you must tell the computer or the program what types you would like to work with. So you click and drag some arrows there and you go in and define that here. So I don't want to work with the first variable in this data file. So I take away them. Just to where I do is to go to the set rules and mm, I take the rule now. Then the next step is the modeling. And I have a lot of models to choose between. If you don't know what to choose, you have three automatically ones that you can use in the beginning. And uh, you can also go to the graphs. And there I have something called web graphs that I'm going to use here. In the background, I have this done already. So I have built up this little stream. And to just see what the result is, is to just go into this, double click on that little icon and then click around. And then I get the results. So here I can see what kind of products people is buying together. So if they are buying frozen meals, they also buy beer because we can see a very thick line here, but they also buy canned vegetables. So that's one group. We can also see that people buying wine has a high probability to buy confectionery, like chocolate, for example. And then we have a group buying fish and fruit and vegetables. You can also get this in text, just clicking here. So you can see that 173 people is buying both canned vegetables and frozen meat. If I close this down, we can see that we have gone further and saved these groups the fruit and fish groups, the beer, beans, pizza group, people that is buying frozen food and beer, for example. And here, I would like to know what kind of people demographically is buying this kind of product. So that's what I have done here. I have put the model, a tree model here, and we can see the results. What kind of people is this? It seems that income and sex is very important here. And we can see the rules for them that male that has an income that is less than 16,900 is one interesting group. So that's something that you can find out. And this is a good information to use for the future, for example. If you go to the wine and the chocolates group, what kind of people is buying that? You also have the you have this rules here that tells you that if they have a value, they buy for more than 32,000, they are female, and they have an income that is higher than 20,000, then we have an interesting group for buying chocolate and wine, for example. So then we got some information very quickly in this way, and that's how the data mining tool is looking like. And what you use is the information for the future. Save the rules and then use these rules or this information for future. For for example, doing direct marketing. So the summary, you have seen a success story, three success stories in the in the first recording, neck and neck. Amsterdam, Tourism, and Advanced Autopods. And in all these three cases, they use predictive analytics to be successful and get profit into their organizations. And predictive analytics is to collect data, analyze and predict for the future, and then act. And then in this part, you also see the demo. And we have some products in the IBM business family, so that's the last picture I would like to show you. 
and this is the key products we had. We have one data collection solution if you are doing questionnaires, finding out the attitudes among your customers. That's also very important for the customer intimacy. And we have a statistics tool called IBM Specific Statistics. This tool was called SPSS before. And that's a statistical analytical program. And then we saw a demo where I showed you the IBM SPSS modeler. That's a data mining tool. So thank you very much for joining this. And welcome back to other.